I've been using the world's biggest binder for two months now. There are a lot of things I love about it and a couple things I dislike. So I have pretty much been using this every single day for the past two months. I decided to make it a vintage Pokemon binder. And since I'm such a perfectionist, that means a lot of changing my mind and pulling cards in and out of it on a regular basis. So I really have had a lot of experience on this thing already, and I have a lot to say about it. I reached out to the company earlier this year and said, hey, will you send me a free binder in return for a YouTube review video? And they said, no, we will send you two binders, one for you and one to give away to your viewers. So stick around for the end of the video and I'll tell you how you can win one of these. But first, let's talk about the exterior. Now, nine out of 10 binders today have the exact same exterior, black, faux leather with an embossed logo on the front and a little silicone grip on the zipper. The Beast Binder is different, but only kind of different. It still has the faux leather exterior, and that's not a bad thing. The reason so many binders have this exterior is because it's really good. So I'm not gonna dock it any points for that. But what they have done here is put a huge logo on the front with a design. And to be honest, I'm not really a fan. It's not my style, but I also kind of like it. Now they have assured me that this design is going away. As of the filming of this video, this is what you can buy, but in just a couple weeks, they'll be offering a bunch of new colors with a more, uh, I guess, modern look to it. And like other modern binders with this faux leather exterior, you can spray it down and wipe it clean uh, without damaging your cards. And that's actually a huge perk. I like to keep stuff clean and it's just, it's cool. Hey, I can clean this without worrying about damaging anything and it cleans up really nice. It's splash proof, which means if you have to take this thing from the house to the car or, or the car to school or something and it's raining, your cards are gonna be just fine. And yeah, I guess we can just address the Snorlax in the room. It's big. So this is 17 and a half by 16 and a half inches. It's a big binder. It's the world's biggest binder. And this is actually what I love about it, but it's also what I hate. We'll get into that in just a moment though. Let's talk about the interior. So when you first crack this thing open, the first thing you're going to notice is this bright red micro suede fabric. It's soft to the touch and I think it looks pretty good and it is bright red as you can tell. Now this actually does serve a practical function. This is gonna prevent the clear plastic from scratching on your front page. So it should stay crystal clear forever. But okay, let's talk about the capacity of this thing. This has a four by five layout, which means 20 cards per page. And with 32 pages, this binder has a total capacity of 1,280 cards, which is absolutely insane. It's really not that thick. It is. It has about the same thickness as a regular nine pocket or even 12 pocket binder, but it has an insane capacity of over a thousand cards. I honestly think they could go a little bit thicker with this. And like I said, I decided to use this as a vintage Pokemon binder. I was hoping I could fit all of Wizards of the Coast in here, but the uh, legendary collection is a little too big. But let's keep talking about the layout. Seeing 40 cards all at once is absolutely insane. And that is where this binder really shines. This is it. It's seeing 40 cards all at once. It's turning a page of 20 cards. The jungle set is displayed in just three pages, which is absolutely bonkers. And it will never get old cracking this thing open and seeing base set laid out in this way. So the pages themselves are very basic, very standard, exactly what you find in every other binder on the market today, which is a great thing because binder pages have evolved massively and where they are now is really, really good. So I'm really glad to see that standard carried over into this bad boy. So let's talk about the overall quality. Um, it's pretty darn good. I would say it's on par with all of the other binders I reviewed. Um, okay, so I'm not, I'm gonna nitpick a little bit. That red microfiber material, there are a few scuffs on it, okay? There's one bad one. 
Um, I think that some people might not even notice, but I do because I'm picky like that. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I also noticed that on the other end of the cover, there's a bit of an air bubble under there. And overall, I think this red material might scratch easily. I'm not too sure yet, but that's my only complaint and it's a little one at that. As far as the stitching and the pages and everything else goes, I went all over it. I tugged at the seams. It all seems up to par. Uh, I mean, it's probably manufactured where other binders are manufactured, so I wouldn't expect it to have bad quality. Oh, but one thing I did notice, and I, I wouldn't really call this a quality thing, but if it's not at max capacity, like right here, it's probably about 60% full. It has a little bit of a like large pizza box quality to it, where it kind of it kind of bows a little bit either way. But uh, I don't know. It kind of it's kind of weird to me uh, when it's full. It's not like that. Um, the zipper is fine. I mean, it's like every other zipper on every other binder. I can't fault it, but I also don't like think it's amazing or anything. And guys, this is unbiased. I got this for free in exchange for the review. There were no other terms and conditions. I don't have to be nice about this binder. And so that's why I am pointing out some of the flaws because I just want to be honest. All right, so let's get into the pros and cons. It can be a pain in the butt to store this binder. I mean, where are you gonna put it? It doesn't go on a shelf and it's honestly too long uh, for a lot of other spaces. So I found myself kind of picking a different home for this every couple of weeks. The duality of this thing is, like I said, what I love and hate about it. It's too big and it's also too big. So yeah, this isn't going to fit in your backpack. When opened up, it's going to take up an entire coffee table. It is inconvenient. It kind of sucks to transport. So this is the price you're gonna have to pay for a binder like this. But again, and I'm gonna keep going back to this, it's incredible to flip through these 20 card pages. It really is. It's amazing. It's. I can't even, I hope it comes through on camera, how cool it looks, cause it really is awesome. Now the capacity of 1280 cards opens up a lot of options. I mean, you can put huge sets in here. I decided to make this a vintage Pokemon binder. So I went from base set all the way up to Neo Destiny. There's like, there's over a thousand cards in here. And it's really cool to flip through three years of history like that. It's, it's insane. And I mean, if you have something like, like a crazy big Pikachu collection, this is the binder for you. This just, it, it, there's so many options with this capacity. I mean, modern sets are a lot bigger for Pokemon. You could probably fit two or three in here, which is absolutely crazy. Or maybe you can just fit all your cards in here. Maybe you can just put all of your cards in one binder. Again, its strength is also its weakness. It is really big. If you order one of these, you're not really gonna understand it until it shows up on your doorstep and then you're gonna say, okay, wow, that's a lot bigger than I expected. So I did discover a few quirks and features of the Beast Binder that I think you're going to appreciate as much as I do. And it all revolves around the sheer size of this thing. Obviously, that, that's what it is. It's the world's biggest binder. But here's what I found. Now, I actually measured the size of the side loading pockets, and I found that the Beast Binder has just ever so slightly smaller pockets. And this is interesting. So I decided to test a Pokemon ETB sleeve in these pockets because the ETB sleeves, they are just a little bit bigger, I guess, and they're a little uh, less soft or more rigid, I would say. And so, these are what I find to have fitment issues with every now and then. And interestingly, they fit absolutely perfect. Check this out. When you put a card in without a sleeve, you can kind of end up putting it on an angle. And if you're like me, you have to go through and straighten them all out. But these ETB sleeves are the slightly bigger or, or I guess standard size sleeves. They fit absolutely perfect, which is just a small detail that I really appreciate. By the way, if you're wondering, this Charizard is fake. I just use it for videos because it's fun. Okay, here's another small detail that I think you'll appreciate. So if you don't know what a binder bump is, have a look at this. 
This is right now my favorite binder, the gem loader top loader binder, but it does have a drawback and it's this binder bump. See, the binding pulls at the pages just a little bit and it results in this bump. In fact, a lot of binders suffer from how the spine is. For example, look at this brand new nine pocket Vault-X binder. It, it kind of rocks back and forth on the spine here before it's broken in. And this is kind of annoying, especially if you have multiple things going on and you're trying to transport cards, it's difficult to try and keep this thing flat. You have to actually weigh it down with something heavy. The Beast Binder solves this issue, which is not something I ever expected. But the distance from the center of the spine to the first column of cards fixes this problem. This binder lays flat. Even with one page turned or two pages turned, it lays flat, which is really, really cool. This is something that other binders can do. And it just has to do with the size. It's just a byproduct of the binder being so big. So turning the pages is a little bit different. You're going to have to sort of remap your brain a little bit. We're used to flipping through binder pages like a book, but these pages are so big that you actually have to pull at them just, just a little bit to add a little bit of tension in order to turn them. Otherwise, they'll flop around and kind of roll, potentially damaging your cards. So I found this really interesting and it's kind of annoying at first, but once you get used to it, it's really no problem at all. Now, like I said, I've got two of these. They sent me two, so I'm giving one away. Uh, I decided to do the giveaway through Discord, not YouTube comments. So link is in the description. Discord is absolutely free to join. It's absolutely free to enter the giveaway and I will ship this anywhere in the world. Absolutely no cost to you, okay? So go ahead, join the Discord and then you'll see the giveaway as soon as you join. Oh, but I, I do ask that you subscribe and like. Obviously you don't have to, but hey, it really helps me out and helps me grow and it helps me do more giveaways like this. So the interior there, the, the red microfiber, I think that's this binder's main fault, aside from, aside from its size, of course. I don't think that material is really high quality. Now the other binders in, in this category, uh, modern binders, they have a nicer material on the inside of the cover. So that's pretty much all I have to nitpick about this thing. Um, Otherwise, would I recommend you pick up one of these? Yeah, I mean, they're reasonably priced. Uh, it's unique. I've reviewed a lot of binders on this channel. I have a ton of binders. I've used many binders and it's just nice to have something different. I mean, it's all nine pocket or 12 pocket. Sometimes it's like a top loader binder or a card saver binder, but really this is the first like really unique, cool binder I've reviewed. That being said, if you go to pre-release events or something like uh, tournaments, I wouldn't bring this. It's too big. It's just too big. And I don't know if the size is really coming across in the camera, but um, I'm six feet tall. I, I got long gangly arms and this thing like, it barely fits under my armpit. Like it's, it's really, really big. So. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna fit in your backpack. You wouldn't want to take this to school or, or work or something like that. So as long as you have other binders that serve those functions, I think this thing is really gonna blow your mind once you, once you do something cool with it. And if you're still watching, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I hope I've covered everything that you're looking for. If not, leave a comment. I'll get back to you in under 24 hours. And thank you so much again. You will see me in the next video.